they've had an optic. I mean, these are the two teams that definitely deserve to be here. They, they were just in the finals together. So I don't think we can really have any better setup than that. Indeed. Interestingly, um, optic won the pistol round on the knife round, rather on Overpass, and they chose to start on the T side. Something which you can uh, see at the beginning of a best of three. We will soon be into the game. The countdown has begun, so we'll see if Astralis... Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> we'll see if Astralis can defend. Everyone buying Kevlar on the Optic side. Glaive's gonna be the Diffuse Kit man. And he's got a smoke, he's got a smoke grenade as well. Yeah, we've been seeing loads of grenades in recent pistol rounds, but not really this one. Just a single smoke and a decoy, and that is it. So a lot of Kevlar's, a lot of fighting. Now, Optic oh, will be making their way. Up Elon kind of splitting the forces a little bit. Narek is kind of charging forwards a little bit on the, on the long side of things with the bomb. And we get a bit of an altercation by the B side of the map. So that's a nice pickup for, well, okay, that's also a nice pickup. Device is sniping with the USP. James, this cannot happen. What are they going to do now? Nap and rush two versus five with Glocks at long range. Why do they keep... <laughs> you think they learned their lesson? You can't just keep challenging Device at that range versus the USP. Oh, and now you got a, a quad face. The Mandem. The Mandem have arrived. Good start for Astralis. Always good to win the pistol round on the CT side. Just avoid, devi avoid Device on overpass on pistol rounds before he knifes you. Such patient play as well. If you have a player at that range of USP who is willing to take those considered shots with the USP, you are very unfavored in that duel. Optic Gaming are going for the Force Buy. Tech 9 to Deagles. Bits and bobs, the odd flashbang. Not going for a fast play towards B immediately, but Nafly and Dinosaur will head in that direction. This will be about damage for the Optic side. Looking to make this as expensive for Astralis as possible. Astralis carrying $20,000 of, of, of equipment at the moment. Works so hard. Looking for the jumps again. He's seen jumps there before. We've seen some, uh, some jack-in-the-box kills this tournament. Three towards the B-bomb site now for Optic. And Nath is going to be looking to try to open things up here with that Deagle. There he goes. Will somebody peek? He might only get one opportunity as soon as they spotted him. There's the spot. There's the shot. And perhaps no more opportunities for Nath. We'll have to see. He's going to be trying to make something happen. He needs something. But Nath, I guess, is not the guy to do it. He's being shot down to 11 HP, so he's not going to be trying any longer. But there are more Deagles where that came from. Mixon and also Stanislaw are carrying the hand cannon. And it looks like they're all about to converge. At the bomb side, but someone should probably get, go back for the bomb. Looks like it's Tarek's job, and then the push can commence. Yeah, Tarek's the bomb boy. So, there's a Molotov on the Astralis side. Astralis is such a good team at having those late smoke grenades, making things very unfavorable when time is not on your side. Optic, though, going through the Moss Tunnel. Glaive's gonna get picked off, no response from the CTs just yet. Still time for Optic to get the bomb down. In the meantime, they've got three kills. Device at the back needs Kyabi to come in for help. If they can get the Molotov on the site, then maybe they can stop that bomb plant from coming in. There's the Molotov. It's going to force the plant away. And there's 10 seconds left. But it's Kyabi on his own. Two more T's remain. Can they get the bomb down? They still fire. They still can't get the bomb down. Nafly finally committing to it. Low health. That will allow Kyabi to get close. Tagging the Seagull. But can he get either of these kills? He's got five bullets left. But it won't be required. Optic win the fourth by. Oh my god. That, that should not have happened. That should not have happened. What a way to just shake Astralis, and especially after seeing the previous overpass that they just played against SK. That is definitely what Optic needs to do. It's basically the ideal start, and you can see what Astralis are going to force by back. He couldn't see anything. <laughs> it's a random kill. <laughs> Leaping through the flames. So triple UMP, couple AKs here for Optic Gaming on the offense, but Astralis, they force bought. They want to take the fight straight to Optic. They don't want to allow them to get the momentum. And Optic realized that this is a very likely eventuality after winning with the Force Buy. This is almost always a response, Force Buy back. But who will win the, the battle of the Force Buys? Look how passive Optic are. Unlike this team, this is not the kind of style that's brought them such success, at least in the buy rounds, but it's a very good approach when they expect aggression from Astralis. They want Astralis to overextend. They want to abuse the range of those AKs. Lots of utility on the optic side as well to use later on. You see those three UMPs, loads of Molotovs. Where's the pot flash? You see the fight. He's far enough that it's not going to pop him. One for one, though. 
Optic will take that for now. Kyabi forced to move back. Astralis starting with one UMP in this round, unable to collect the gun from Tarek. Optic with time left, and indeed, just like when you have one AWP and you get a kill and rotate, Astralis putting the numbers towards A. It's really smart too because Astralis realized with their positioning that there's it's, it, it's pretty hard to do anything from where they are. All bunched up together, there's no way for them to be effective, so they just have to go rotate, gamble on A. And because Optic have no presence on B and it's too late in the round to do that, they have to go A. This is perfect for Astralis. This is the setup they need, and now it just requires great individual oh. skill here. Amazing headshots, but where are they? They're all on the Astralis side as they wipe out Optic, and that is just Astralis there. They just outmaneuvered Optic completely. Anything Brilliant you stuff. can do. Four players surviving. When Optic gets along, they've got four players with less than 25 HP. Oh, sorry, two players with less than 25 HP. Those pistols become miniguns. And the forces will continue. Always fun when you see constant force buys because no team can get consecutive rounds. We'll see if Optic can steal one back. Problem is, Astralis are much better equipped now. We see Device with the AWP, AKs as well as M4s. So they've got more AKs than M4s on the... On the uh, CT side, which makes life even worse for Optic. Looking for those close quarters engagements in the connector, but they will not be served any by the CTs. Passive positions being held by Astralis now with all the advantages. Yeah, it'd be hard for Optic to bring this one back, you would think, but they will likely go to what was previously successful, which is you know, just even seeing if they can kind of squeeze in a, a pick off with one of those Deagles, perhaps. They've got a couple. That's definitely what they're very good at doing. But if that doesn't work, if you have an extended round where time starts to tick away, you opt to go for a set piece. They've set themselves up for that. They've got all the smoke grenades. Though this time they're actually, they don't have any presence towards sewers and B in general and monster. They actually are all around the toilets and A long here. So it looks like they want to go for the a wall of smokes play onto the A bomb site. Now, if they actually do kind of Dignitas style wall of smokes, this, the bomb could very well go down here and they could have a solid chance of doing some serious damage. We have a counter monitor from Device along, but it hasn't been good enough. And here we go, close quarters. Stanislaw taken down through the smoke, the bomb's delayed, but the plant should be coming in. Tarek's slightly tagged, but now it's the retake situation for Astralis. They have one kit onto Zipex, so they need to bear in mind what happens to that should he go down. The Deagles are raining off shots, down goes QRB, Rush goes down in the meantime. The rest are cleaned up very quickly indeed by Astralis. Just losing the one player. They will take that. Optic get the plant, some bonus money for them, but it's Astralis who get that consecutive round, which should mean eco -turn for Optic. Yeah, they has got to go for the eco now, but I say, you know, the bomb plant was definitely quite nice, and I love it when a team has multiple plans. You know, nice. you can see they bring themselves this strategy where it's like, okay, we can we can play for picks. If it doesn't work out, we're not going to overcommit. We aren't going to understand the limitations of this and at least guarantee ourselves a bomb plan as best we can. And uh, that's one thing that Optic are very good is, is understanding how far they can take certain plays. You know, they don't ever stretch things and try to to overextend too much. Now, this is going to be a much more difficult round. And a bit of aggression from Astralis could make this quite explosive to begin with. Glaive shouldn't stand his ground too long in this position because, of course, there are advantages for his side. Down to the Deagle now, but that might be good. Will he escape? We've got Stanislaw trying to do some damage to Astralis, but indeed Glaive has managed to get out of there. Device picking off Stanislaw, leaving that fly alone. That's a nothing round for Optic. Didn't invest much, not a big deal. No damage done to Astralis though. 4-1, Optic coming in for the buy. Five AKs coming out for the T side. They've got $50 in the bank between five players after this buy. $50 there. That's not a lot of dollars, James. It's 50. That's what it is. You can buy a decoy with that, and that's about it. Yeah, it's a, a great start now for Astralis. They're starting to build that bank, and with the EVAK, we are going to see a default from Optic. And it's quite interesting that Astralis aren't actually using device too aggressively early on. And I think that's a good approach. You want to m m kind of more so feel as to how the Optic side want to play those T rounds. Ha just get a feeling for what kind of pace do they like, what kind of defaults will they be favoring against us this time. Instead of just taking a blind aggression, you want to see what they are going to be up to first. So I like the more passive approach here from Astralis. So they can feel them out in that way. But now we get a bit of an information play from Dupree. Just, just a pop flash. Just a bit of a look into the sewers area. Doesn't see much though. Very passive start from Optic. Device has support on long from QRB, should it be required. 
Short B, of course, is a very good area to hold on to. Makes life a lot harder for Optic. And uh, if Astralis can keep a player there, they'll have a lot of information with regards to the rotation from the T side. And as time runs out for Optic, certain rotations become less likely. Mixwell asking questions towards Monster, but could it be a fake? Kyabi's pushing toilets now. These Optic players could be in trouble. Yeah, oh my god, what happened? Three headshots! Yeah, the positioning did not work out there. Kirby's position was amazing. And Optic Gaming had no idea what was going on. Stanislaw was just spinning around like, what do I do? Where are the CTs? Kirby can be anywhere basically at this point. So Stanislaw, all he can do really now is to get some damage and maybe get a couple one-on-ones and win those. Get rid of some weapons here on Astralis. Let's see if he can do it. He's getting close now to the bomb site. And Kirby's essentially just making sure that he doesn't rotate back towards the B-bomb site. And they have no idea where he is at this point. It's probably not worth peeking, so keep yourself alive. Look at the money on Astralis. They are all north of $5,000, some very close to ten. Oh man. Just a one round for Optic, heading towards maximum loss bonus. But again, the implications of the cash in Astralis's bank Bodes well for them. One AK on Stannis Law. And a bunch of Deagles onto the remainder of Optic. They seem pretty good at winning in crap situations. Will this be another opportunity to buy? looking for the AWP shot. But they know better than that. Pot shots being taken by the Deagle as well of Tarek. There's a lot for Optic to get done in the round like this. With the AK and the Deagles, there's a lot of picking potential. And especially with the Molotov, you have. There's only one, but there is potential with that to try to re remove a CT from a position to then get him into the open for a pickoff. So Optic are a team that are very tactical, so that we might expect something similar to that. But they are taking it very slowly again. It's very interesting how Optic really wants to get the early round advantages by capitalizing on early aggression from Astralis. But Astralis aren't really giving it to them just yet because playing passively is working. Kirby. May not be able to escape this position if he can't kill. Rush has rotated towards long in reaction to those shots. You see him playing the off angle now, looking to take Kyabi by surprise. Kyabi spots him though, lovely tapping from him. Worth noting that such an important update to the game. Great hold from Dubree, bomb spotted as well. Not that many T's left, double peak coming in. Stannis loves that AK, but they're both quite heavily tagged. So again, damage may be minimal for Optic Gaming in this round. Dubree gets his next kill on short, that's the AK gone. Nathfly wants to go in, in that direction. And Molotov will be there for a while. So again, just one kill for Optic in this round. That wall, is, that wall is being mounted by Astralis at the moment. So you might need to build a bigger one. So this is going to be tough now for Optic to get back in this one. Just, just again, because Astralis have yet to show any aggression. And we know that Device is very capable of bringing the AWP into forward positions and then wrecking people. So that is that could be a potential issue. And it's interesting too, because Astralis could just say, we're going to just keep doing the same thing. Or they could try to say, we're expecting an adaptation from Optic, so we're going to try to get ahead of that by uh, trying to throw them off with an aggression first. But still pretty passive. And a difference from Optic's default here, we're seeing them go straight for the sewers control. Pop flash in though for Dupree, looking to get some damage and get some information too. Saw two players. Tarek wants to just take him down and that's exactly what he's going to do. Nice opening here coming in for the Optic side. Make that two in fact as Device pushes long. Kyabi in a forward position. But the bomb is still... Very passive towards the beginning of Connector and can easily get taken towards B with the numbers Optic have in Connector. That's one kill for Kyabi, but there are three more people in short B essentially. So it won't be good for too much, but it may slow down Optic and it may allow Astralis to reposition. Specs going towards the barrels. Hot flash off the pillar. Will it be good enough? That's why not flash at all. The smoke, in fact. One for one. Traded immediately. Three players now for Optic on the site. Glaive with a lovely angle, denying the plant, but it's still time for Optic to come back to this. Two kills for him. That's the one versus one through the smoke. That's disgusting. That is gross. Seven to one. Before the beginning of that round, Astralis had lost four players in five rounds. They've got catch to rebuy here. I absolutely love that round from Astralis. I mean, even though they went down to a three versus four situation, uh, you had Kirby as the guy on the flank. He gets that pick off. And then essentially, 
He's blocking Optic from going to A, and he realizes this, so he goes for the Gamble, rotates immediately all the way around to B to have the bodies there, and that position we saw Glaive in, I've seen him do that so many times, just standing on the smoke, it's a very good way to counter those set smokes that we often see on the B takes from the terrorist sides, and it might be something to, to stop doing actually because of the, the level of effect we're seeing players like Glaive play from that position with. So, we get the tactical timeout, Optic definitely need a bit, of the a bit of a breather here just to figure out how to attack this situation because Astralis, it's 7-1. It doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon. Six round lead for Astralis. Just a reminder, there is, uh, there is no restriction to coach communication this year at the very least in ECS. No knee jerk reaction to the, uh, the major rules. Device, can he get up there fast enough? He can't! Very difficult situation, but fortunately for him, Nafly, who engaged him, is the only person without a rifle. That could have been a lot worse for Australia. The player starting his rounds with $13,000. Of course, money had to be spent. Glaive being the last man standing. Average is about $6,000 to rebuy on the CT side, so that money can disappear quite quickly, but Optic needs success. And then putting all of their chances in one place, which is the A-bomb sites all their eggs in one basket for the, for the time being. And they're just going to play contact here. They don't have many grenades. Optic would expect to see another wall of smokes from them. Glaver's turned his attention to this side. Oh, device! I thought he had it. Couldn't pull the trigger in time. Mix all the pick. That's going to start the push here for the Optic side. Kirby's going to flash through the smoke. Get himself a great angle there. Has to spray somebody down, but he gets nothing. Tarek denies him, as will Mixwell. Get a bit of a team kill coming in from Rush, but Glaive and Zipex answering the call right now, bringing it down to one player, and the bomb needs to be collected right now. Naf, he's going to realize, he's going he's to have his, uh, his gut feeling that there is a very possible flank going on at the moment. And you can see Dupree is lurking just holding the flank in the most passive way possible. He's in the back. And waiting for Naf to make the move. Naf's going to be forced to pick up the bomb and plant it at this rate, but that said, now there's some movement from Dupree. 10 seconds, Naf light. His choices are being taken away from him. Zebex isn't close enough to stop the bomb plant, but Dupree is. Bomb goes down just in time. That will uh, perhaps help Optic get a, another buy-in. They are at maximum loss bonus, but once you spend that, it might not be enough. Bomb plant may take them over the line as far as buying goes, but it's another round. It's 8 1 in favor of, of Astralis. An Astralis hell bent on revenge, redemption on victory. They won two of the three Face It Leagues last year. They want to get back to that reputation. Reputation lost, but not forgotten. Yeah, the, the bomb plant is so, so cool because it means that, that, that they have $4,200. That means AKs and all the nades. You're not restricted in that sense. So that gives them the ability to play slower if they want to. But that said, they're going to be in, a, in with a fast pace towards sewers once again. We've seen this previously. But Astralis' defense just seems... I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say impenetrable because it has been crushed in moments, but they've been so clutch bringing it back in every time. Everyone on Astralis seems to be so incredibly confident. You can see Tarek is the man to try to get the entry frag, to get things going here. The Optic side spots a slither of Zipex's shoulder. Now Rush will join him, Nav comes in as well. They're slowly pushing in for contact. And Astralis, they're not rotating yet either. That's a bad miss. And it'll cost him a second smoke again. Astralis notorious for those late smoke grenades, but they've had to throw their second last one just to fix that problem in short. We see Mixwell creeping through the monster tunnel, looking for another opening. Perfectly timed pop flash though from Zipex. That may uh, give him other ideas, Mixwell, but he continues on. Optic are committing to the push. The bomb is in the monster tunnel as well. It's a two-man split, two men on either side. And Dupree gets information for a team. Managed. By the time, lovely from Dupree with the headshot there. Running out of bullets and he'll get taken down by Rush. Into the trade though from Device, leaving Stanislaw alone versus Dupree. Sean Pinky coming in. Down goes Device. He's on fire though. He doesn't know where his last two CTs are. And Zipex from out of nowhere takes him down. Yeah, I was thinking that, that, that wasn't looking good. Just sticking around by B forever. And Astralis looks so prepared for that. And even though they kept getting the information of the pressure, they never take it for granted. They play it patiently, they play it with confidence, they trust themselves to be able to hold down the bomb site. And you can see Dupree just delivering an excellent double kill from the barrels. And Astralis right now making Optic look easy. 
And Optic didn't get a bomb plant that time, so they can't properly buy here. They're going to have to go for a half buy instead because of not getting that bomb down. It's another Optic Gaming timeout. How do we take a round over the line? You saw Tarek got himself in a great position. If there was a CT peeking from the water area, he was surely going to take one in the face. But the shadow of Zipex wasn't enough at the close range. Nine to one. Not the start they wanted. Again, they're on home territory now for the most part. Got a crowd behind them, but they don't have the, the scores on the board. Tech nine play from Optic. Not going for a fast B approach. So we'll see if they have the tactics behind this purchase. Around the smoke now, Glaives forward, so it's the vice. Things going well for Astralis once again. Another opportunity for them to just build money at their ease. Just the one kill on Stanislaw. Very hard fought for kill. The maximum loss bonus continues for Optic, but can they double their score to two? And the thing with Astralis right now is that, again, one of the, the, the reasons why it's so important that in this matchup that they haven't decided that they need to go aggressive to win rounds and they're 10-1, so obviously that's been the case, is because normally you, you need to take those risks on the CT side because if you allow the the T side to get close to a bomb site without having any early frags, you know, removing their grenades and so on by forcing them to check spots or, or counter grenade you, they can just execute onto the site and it's really hard to defend the A bomb site properly and then they get post plant where they have huge advantages. But even with that, Optic aren't winning rounds somehow. So this is a really weird matchup from that perspective. And we get a three-man sewers take from Astralis. So they are going for a risk. And this is a beautiful boost. I never see this, Jace. This, this is this is Dirt McGurt. That is disgusting. Naf lies shadow is spotted. This is but this is not this is not right, James. Ooh. Oh! Gave him a haircut. I need a haircut, not with an AK though. Three optic players towards long, so this uh, three-man stack isn't going to work out, and Astralis will need to rotate. QRB over towards A on his own at the moment, but optic will still require time to clear out the toilets area, so despite the stack on B, Astralis knows the clock, and they know that it's unlikely optic will be able to capitalize on that if they are unawares. 49 seconds remain for optic to continue their push. Nafly on the AWP. Again, we mentioned how many orcas there are on optic game inside. Once again, back to the set piece on the A-bomb side. There's only two, uh, it's actually three smokes and three Molotovs. So just enough here for Optic to pull on set piece onto this bomb side. Cut off the vision to the front of the site and force the CTs away with the, the Molotovs. And oh, Kirby, is no one going to check this? Why is no one checking this spot? Kirby getting, oh man, three from Kirby. That is a problem. That is a big problem for Optic. No one checked the blind spot, and now Nap just jumps into the vice. Again, that comes down to Astralis deploying a re-smoke of long with 30 seconds left. Astralis are so good at holding on to smoke grenades, Optic have no choice because they've run the clock down and their timing has been ruined by that smoke. They have to run through the smoke, and that, that makes life easy for KRB. Easy all day. Two players over $10,000 for Astralis. 11 to 1. 11 to 1! Over Optic, Optic, who bested them just over a week ago. Could the confidence be shaken if this continues? Are we going to see a 14 half? I think it's I think it's really possible right now because Astralis aren't being pushed to any kind of limit. Astralis aren't having to, they're not being tested. They can they can go so much further than this, and Optic just aren't getting there just yet. This is looking way too easy. Optic trying to get what they can done with this limited buy. This is going to be quite difficult. Another little setup hit from Astralis there with Kirby on the boost. The Vice in the meantime will get a pick off elsewhere, leaving Optic now with three players and with no pick offs, with no limited map control. And it's just going to come down to a massive individual performance from the man with the AK. That's Mixwell. It's unlikely that one of these two players with Tech Nines will get all that much done. It's Mixwell's job to be the can opener. The problem is for him. Dupree was jumping on the bomb site and he saw that he saw them come through Connector. They know people are there already. And they're getting sprayed down, just not getting the frag. Not getting the frag for Optic. Again, complete wipeout, not a single player picked off. We are into round 14. Nathalie's got three kills. Tarek's got four kills. Mixwell has two kills. Rush has two kills.
They can't get the picks. We have the uh, the Krieg coming out onto Nafly. Will that be the difference then? <laughs> but well, maybe. The thing is about about this again is that again, Astralis are playing pretty passively, and and you can get picks when a team's taking risks or there. And a lot of teams have to do that against the other top level teams because you don't want to allow a team to just execute on a bomb site because that's very very hard to stop a very well drill a well drilled execution. But that said, we do have a more forward positions than Mixwell's. I have no idea what is going on there. Mixwell falls to nothing. Glaive suicide, was awarded, James. Glaive was awarded $300 for the suicide. For those of you at home who are wondering, Stanislaw, can you get one kill in this round? Yes. Okay, challenge accepted. What more can he do? He has a lot of time on the clock here, but obviously this is a very unfavorable position and he is being flanked in all directions. Dupree is almost in T-spawn at this point. He does not need to, to uh, pursue any further. He can just hold a super weird angle. We have Kyabi above Stanislaw now. He can even get knife in this position. And he oh. almost will. That's a massive blind spot. Death by paper cuts. That is uh, a horrible existence in that round. 13 to 1. Well, this is not how Optic probably expected this first map to go. Astralis must be loving it though. They don't. They haven't had to really change all that much. Now moving forwards again, we've got the AKs, we've got Tech Nine and Galil, we've got some grenades. Optic, you know what idea do they go to? They're in this position where nothing has worked. Nothing has worked. All the spots where they should be in an advantage, it just, it just falls flat on its face. So where do you go as a team after that? I guess you go for perhaps edge play straight into the bomb site. You go play for the therapy, Dan. That's where you go. <laughs> you go for therapy. You pay someone to listen to your uh, your problems, your issues. Oh, will it be afraid? Does he hear the footsteps? Does Dupree hear the footsteps? There we go. Into the meat grinder. There you go. He requires a bit to rest him at the B bomb site. Although, there goes Zipex. But look at the bomb. The bomb is at the end of a red carpet. And that carpet is being trodden upon by Astralis with muddy boots. They're making a mess. They don't care. Not a good day for Optic right now. Nafly with two kills already, got most of his health intact. Minute on the clock. Stanislaw though, is he going for some kind of flank? He is checking every single corner. Look at the paranoia, they could be anywhere. They could be behind you, Stanislaw, careful. This is, a, this is such a slow approach that how much time will they have to uh, pursue the, the bomb site? Yeah. Oh, that, but this is where it pays off. This is where it pays off. Stanislaw creeps and boom, there it is. Finds a frag onto device. And now that allows Naf to actually play off of Stanislaw. They can combine from multiple positions if they choose to, but they're going to go and play the trade game. Now there's two CTs versus two TC. Are they going to split or go together? It looks like they are going for the split now. And it's all about timing. It's all about coordination. It's all about the first one on one. B1 by Naf. He's got to pick up this kill. Stanislaw creeps. Oh, he finds the flick. Where's the trade? Where's the trade? Naf is far away. And that's. Enabling Kirby to reset it and picks up the kill 14 to 1. An incredibly strong first half from Astralis on overpass in this best of three finals. This is the worst possible way you could ever start a finals. Optic, they've shown resilience though, James. I have every confidence that they can bring themselves back. Maybe, maybe it's going to be next to impossible on this map, but in the series, you can't count them out. Well, there is... Uh a few, there are a few things riding on the pistol rounds, such as game points for Astralis. So difficult times for Optic. It's hard to read the faces of the Optic Gaming side because that face is how they are at the beginning of the match and the end. All Kevlar and Optic looking for headshots with these USPs. Makes well wanting to uh, force the aggression there. But if you've got four men from Astralis in connector looking to burst out on the high ground, then Mixwell could be taken by surprise. In the meantime, Nafly trying to pick off the vice, he'll do that. But where's the bomb? Mixwell forced to run forward. Can Astralis get on the bomb site now? They're kind of pinched between the CTs. Yeah, this is really weird, actually. There is nowhere else to go but onto the A-bomb site. And Optic know it. But it all comes down to hitting the shots in a pistol round, hitting those headshots. And Kirby's going to find himself an engagement rush there, sitting in the bank. Kirby's got help there, he's got a trade fragger, so in Rush has to be very careful. And in they go. Trying to go for the challenges. Rush is forced from friends. There goes Tarek, picks up the kill as well onto Kirby. All of a sudden, Astralis are losing numbers. Just do pre left against four. He has to waste to pull it out of the bag, but he can't. And that's going to be mix all the defuse around for Optic. A very, very needed pistol round, but the road is very long. 
So as soon as uh, Astralis end up in the middle of the sandwich, the round gets super weird for them. Opportunity for Optic. They finally double their score from one to two. And now they have the monetary advantage and maybe the advantage of the CT side. We'll have to see. The pressure will be great. Astralis having planted the bomb. They have the AKs in the following rounds. Minimal investment. Pure P250s. No grenades. It's looking to maim the economy again, of course. Astralis are playing the long game. Only two rounds required versus the 13 of, uh, sorry, 14 of Optic. So to do some damage to the CT economy and break them a bit later on. Nothing but rifles coming out from Optic. They know AKs are in the next round. They, uh, they need to survive in the numbers. They need a perfect round. Yeah, they absolutely do. They also need to remember what it's like to frag people, James. It's been a while since they really got many frags. It's only Stanislaw really that's having any any frags in this matchup. Mix all and rush on two a piece. Not, not a good side for them. But Tarek is gonna pick himself up one and another one as well. As Charlotte slowly but surely offer themselves up. They will be happily received. So a clean round for Optic. Four frags there for Tarek. But now the AKs come into play and life starts to get a little bit tricky for Optic. Still two players with two kills. Probably begging for those uh, eco frags, but Stanislaw and Tarek denied them. So the uphill struggle for Optic begins here with the AKs being wielded from Astralis. Could be a uh, faster round from Astralis with the limited utility they have. Four flashbangs and two smoke grenades. Makes well stop a fast approach in connector. And that's good because the Astralis have uh, a fast B split play through the connector area. That's part of their repertoire. For now, they've got a lurker towards B in effect. Two players in connector. Slowly clearing it out with the numbers. That can allow them to uh, take stronger possession of short B. See his effects moving in there now. He will throw the flash as Dupree will open the door. Very safe stuff. See many uh, sloppy approach in that position from other teams, but that's quite a good one from Astralis. And they're trying to identify where these CTs might be playing. And Optic are, hold Optic are doing the right thing, I think, holding all the way back because there's a lot of these in a lot of these engagements against five AKs with three Famuses on ranges on big ranges. You're not you're not often going to be favoured in those spots unless there's distraction or something weird is going on. So it makes sense to just play passively, force them close. Looks like ZFX is going to pick up one frag. B is eliminated. Get tra it gets traded over by B. Astralis, they creep towards A. They don't care about B. In they go with the bomb. Mixwell's there on the angle by track. Gets himself a one-on-one -on -one against Glaive. That's the bomb down. And now there's really big problems here for Astralis. All they have left is Device in a one-on-three. Patiently waiting behind the flames. Looking for these CTs to get a bit overzealous. Hot flash will allow him to extend his range. Again, that's why in that uh, trade position. Triple P coming out from Optic. And uh, maybe they will really get going again. We've seen such consistency from players such as Rush on Optic Gaming. And maybe that consistency will come back on the CT side. Mixwell doing great work around the truck. Staying alive, causing a nuisance. Always good to get shots through the smoke as well. Nose is at angles. Ten rounds behind our Optic Gaming. Astralis back on the eco. Yeah, once again, just a few deagles and a couple P250s to play with. A single smoke on Zipex and a flashbang on Glaive. Seen much, uh, you can get much out of a single flashbang. We'll have to see what Optic can do with this connector control, though. Dupree's coming close with a deagle. Oh, oh! Dupree! Always good for the deagle. And there is one for him. Slowly impacting the number of Optic. But uh, Mixwell's found himself a good range to play with. Got to be careful with those uh, pot shots, though. Tarek's in connector for the time being, but he's making some noise. He might be hurt. It's play to his right. He may want to protect the drops weapon as well. Mixwell picked off elsewhere. That could cause a rotation for the CTs, but Kiapi's just charging straight in. He knows what the CTs are doing, and he gets a free plant. That's amazing. That is amazing. He just knew. Lovely stuff. He's got himself the M4, of course, as well, that he picked up from the player that he fragged previously. And this actually becomes very winnable now for Optic because to, to defuse this bomb is really difficult when the, the T's are in those positions by Toilers. And Zipex is going for the flank as well. This, this has Astralis written all over it. Not like this. Optic, there's one frag for Rush. Defuse starts to come in for three seconds. Two.
Can the mice find it? Oh, he gets it in time, but everybody's dead. It should be all good. There's just enough time to get the defuse. Rush is going to pull it out, and defuse comes in, but that was not a round that should ever have gotten that close. That was quite a scare for Optic. Quite a scare indeed. Dupree always doing damage with the Deagle. Kyabi with the second shot there. But Optic prevail. Five rounds on the board. Astralis though on the full buy. That uh, bomb will come in handy for that bonus money. $800 per person. Lots of grenades. An AWP. See what their play is. Tarek and Mixwell with forward positions. Not shy of aggression towards uh, this mountain position. But the smokes and flashes will ward them off. Dupree and Kyabi very quick into connector. Specs again outside the Mons tunnel, and it seems they're going to go for that similar split into the short B position. Stanislaw, though, is forward, and if he takes a shot on Specs, he could get traded from the door. And there's Dupree, can he get the trade? Two man spray down. It's a team, it's a team kill. Oh man, oh that is not good. That is not good for Optic. Four versus three. Astralis have a load of time to try to play this advantage. Optic needs somebody to make a big play here. Mixwell's in a forward position. Mixwell has to be able to get something out of this. He's got to get a couple frags, something. Something for Optic. Because if you let Astralis get to the bomb site, they're going to find ways to just trade you. There is one from Mixwell. They've discovered him now. How long can he hold them off for? Can he buy time for the rotation? The thing is, though, Astralis can still go back to B. So oh, he's got everything to do alone. Huge grenade from Mixwell. That's Tarek C. Kyabi, he's close. He's looking for Mixwell to rotate out. But he's going to take one straight in the face from Mixwell. The rotation coming in towards B now. They know two are over towards A. But Tarek's on his way as well. Both teams are reading each other. He's going to fly off angle towards Barrels. Not good enough. The bomb site's free taken. But now the bomb is down. The device can't get the fatal connection. This is buying time for the rotation. These players are both untouched. Good damage to Tarek, but he needs more than that. 25 seconds left. He's going to reset the situation. Or is he going to run away? No, nope. he's committing to this. He's got an angle. He could get the bomb. But it's not going to be easy. It's completely exposed. 13 seconds, 12 seconds, and he may have to run away now. This is surely not recoverable. Yeah, I love that he gave this a try because, again, Astralis have so many rounds in advantage of Optic at the moment that doing damage is, is amazing. Just getting the damage into their economy is just amazing. But he will save it, and his team have enough to go for a full buy behind it. So how is York going to be played this time by Stanislaw? Of course, we saw previously a aggression into Suez. And there is a timeout actually from Astralis to perhaps work out how they're going to use this next buy. Because again, they're the T side. They, can, they have all the freedom to roam about the map as they choose to do so. But uh, five in a row from Optic. Optic's starting to feel a bit better, I'm sure. Dan, we've had one T yep. round one yep. in this entire match so far. One T round, four diffuses. Elimination for days. Yeah, the, the crazy thing with Optic Seaside is they could never really get plants down, which is kind of nuts. They had they struggled to do that so much, even though Astralis gave them easy set piece setups in a lot of rounds. So Astralis, I mean, they've got so many options, options to go towards. They can go and try to experiment with pick base play, very passive. They can just try to go in for a very fast contact play. There's a lot of stuff they haven't tried just yet. It's still early days on their T side, but again, they only need two rounds, which is absolutely insane, to be honest. And uh, and they're home free. Slow start from Astralis. Rush over towards the B bomb site. It's been one of the uh, stars for the Astralis side recently. Stanislaw, though, doing great work for Optic in this game so far, despite the six rounds they have. Nice opening. Tarek playing close. Gotta be careful, though. Can't risk it too much. He'll get picked off. It's going to cause a rotation. Now, Mixwell currently alone, having to cover long and the uh, short toilet position. Could see some jumping peaks. And Device has time to look for a pick, to look for an additional pick. Yeah, you're right. the crowd, oh, and man. there it is. Almost inevitable. Oh man, and Stanislaw misses the shot there. That, that, was the, that was the shot, that was the surprise. 
And Device Knight's got all of his teammates rallying behind this pick. They don't have to go for it though. They just cleared out the sewers and the connector area. And you can see they're going to go back into that empty space. They know that Optic are stuck on the bomb sites. They know that Optic only have three left alive. And they saw a couple of them towards A. So into B they go. It's a free bomb plant basically here. Astralis have made a great call in this uh, situation. And Kabi even gets himself an additional kill. This is going to be impossible. How on earth do Optic retake this? There goes Nathalite, Stanislaw, $500 in the bank in a one versus four. He has no choice but to hold on to his sniper rifle at this point. Rush tried to stop the plant from going down, pushed the balcony, but he got picked off with no kills. And almost ine inevitably, we have Astralis making their way to game point. Yeah, that pick from Device was actually amazing. It's not, not easy to hit shots like that. You only get one opportunity as soon as you're discovered on the angle. You're, you're done. And that's why it's interesting when Mixor, uh, rather, Sans missed the, Sans missed the, uh, the trade frag. Mixor, uh, rather, Device did not expect him to be there. If he hits that, who knows how this round goes. But can't even save the, uh, the AWP into the next round. Oh, man, they are really broke, James. They are really broke. They got no money, Dan. No money and lots of problems in this first map of the grand final here at the second season of ECS 2016. Pistols coming out for most players. Mixwell has enough for a rifle, the one rifle optic. One of the games currently have a signature aggressive style. They will need nothing but aggression in this round if they are to hold on to what little they have in this first game. Stanislaw pushing the fountain area, that deep smoke. And this time, T's are behind it, but only the one. So this kind of forces Astralis towards the B-bomb side. They have to wonder if there is a stack here. This may leave them stuck for a while. And indeed, most of Optic are on the high ground. Yeah, moving into that B-bomb side now. Rush, oh no, Rush. Is he going to look in the right place at the right time? Here they come, all just creeping together. Rush is going to discover a lot of T's coming his way. He doesn't have any help. He's stuck on the 5-7. A bullet straight to the face, courtesy of the one Dupree. Now Mixwell's going to turn his attention, and he has to do so much. There's five AKs. His two teammates only have five sevens. They will be making their way in to help him soon, but this is surely too much to ask for. There's no utility either. Tarakin with a quick frag. Trying to push the issue there into jungle, but there goes Mixwell. Stanislaw trying to do what he can. Oh, Zipex turns around and says, sit down. 16 to 6, Astralis with a very dominant first map of overpass. And Astralis with something to prove, and that's a great way to uh, kick off the proceedings. I thought it was 50-50 going into this final, although I did uh, favor Astralis from the beginning. So he's got off to a good start. Can they close it out though? Optic will have some time to, to breathe, some time to reflect, some time to figure out what went wrong there and how they get back to those peak performances. You heard Lurker say, if they're not all playing um, to the best level, they can, then maybe Astralis could take this. Maybe that's true. A strong 1-0 in favor of Astralis. 10 round lead over Optic. 14-1 uh, half. That is, that's psychological warfare. Yeah, the grand finals, that is hard to deal with. However, they will be, as you say, having a short break to refresh and moving into terrain, which is territory that Optic are more than familiar with. Indeed, and that break's going to come now. So afterwards, we'll see the thoughts of the analysts. But first, a short break. They will see you back here a few minutes. Damn. They got wrecked. They couldn't, they couldn't even like... like that, every part should never look like that. Wow, this could be fast. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> Might actually have time to go to the party like Yes! Make it fast! <laughs> 